All right, what's up? It's Deborah Fairchild. I'm here with Duro, an amazing producer, engineer, and he's currently a senior VP at Republic Records based in Manhattan. So thank you, Duro, for being here with us. Uh, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm super excited. I met you, gosh, I think in like 2006, a long time ago. It's been a while. Yes, and I've always loved all your work and everything you've done. And so it's super exciting that you're here with us to talk to everybody. So what made you want to get into the music industry? You know, just just as a kid, you know, growing up. Um, I mean, I, I just I grew up in a house of music. You know, my parents weren't musicians, but my dad had a huge vinyl collection. Uh, he listened to a lot of jazz, Motown. Um, and my family's from, from Trinidad from in the Caribbean. So, you know, we listened to a lot of Calypso and reggae. So my house was just like, you know, when we were home, it was just always filled with, with music. You know, we didn't watch a lot of television. It was just always filled with, with music. So I, I, I always had, you know, just had always had an affinity uh, for, for music. And uh, in my early teenage years, you know, I had friends that were older than me that were were creating, and um, I just kind of just at, at first I kind of just wanted to be like them. You know, just kind of as as far as you know they were older than me, and uh, just kind of following behind them. And you know, it just just something that just stuck with me, and it was just interesting and and fun. Well, that is. How did you get into the studio world? Like, what was your first gig or? Did you stumble into it or did you know that's what you wanted to do? Well, you know, as a kid, you know, creating, uh, you know, 13 years old was uh, when I first started going to recording studios with, you know, my best, my childhood friend, my best friend, you know, we would do odd jobs and work in a flea market and do all these sorts of things to kind of save up money. And my mom used to take us to, to a recording studio that, you know, we found in the back of the Village Voice. You what? That's yeah. Amazing. So, you know, and, you know, we were just doing that and things just progressed and um, through, you know, junior high and, and high school. And, you know, we just started taking it more seriously. And um, when I was, I guess, 18, I was 18 going on 19. Uh, I was going to uh, Five Towns College. And when I was in, you know, going to Five Towns, uh, I was learning a lot, but I just had a thirst for more. Yeah. And uh, I felt like I really wanted to get an internship. And I, I went to the placement office, you know, at the school and, and they said, well, you know, we only play second semester juniors or seniors. You know, when they're referring interns to studios, they want to put their, you know, their brightest and, you know, their, their best. And, you know, I was just a freshman. So I was asking, you know, kids around school, hey, do you know of any studios I can get an internship? And and um, there was one person, you know, I was friends with. His name is uh, Ephraim Santiago. And he was like, yeah, I know this place in the city, you know, it's called Platinum Island. And um, it's a cool spot that, you know, they've done this, they've done that. And I was like, OK, cool. I mean, you know, can you hook me up? And he's like, yeah, you know, the studio manager, his name is. Uh, Mike Callahan. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, you know, but, but who's the owner, you know? And he yeah. gives me the owner's name. His name is Richie Kessler. And, you know, my, my dad always told me, you know, start at the top and then let them, you know, say, you know, well, you need to speak to, you know, so yeah. I, so I call the studio and uh, I asked for Richie Kessler and uh, you know, he, he, I said, you know, I'm a friend of Ephraim and uh he gets on the phone and, you know, had a nice little chat conversation. He's like, yeah, you know, come down, you know, we'll have a conversation, you know, do a little interview. And I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, and uh, I remember the day that I, um, I went to do my interview, uh, they were actually working on, a, uh, Hank Shockley was working on a remix for That's The Way Love Goes. What? At the studio that day. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. And, you know, I had an interview with Richie and, you know, here I am, you know, 19 years old and 
no actual studio experience except for what you know the small studios i worked with my friend but like as an engineer i had no right. no true experience i just i actually just started in school two months prior uh no resume i didn't have a resume anything and you know just i, I was just really fortunate we had a, a really great conversation he's, and he said to me he's like yeah after six o'clock you know call back speak to mike callahan you know the same mike callahan and he'll put you on the intern schedule and I just, that was really like that was my my beginning that's amazing yeah that is really really cool so when you were starting out and doing all that stuff do you think there's anything that you learned in that time that's really helped you become so successful like um there's so many things that i've learned you know um yeah. and i think it's a combination wow there's there's a there's a there's a lot and i i think i think there are things that i learned you know, working in the studio, but I also think there are things that I learned before I even got there that I applied in the studio that got me far as well, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, for example, you know, my dad would always tell me, you know, he was very big on investing in yourself and, and being present. And if you're there, you know, that's how opportunities come along. And I was on the schedule at Platinum Island one day a week, mm -hmm. but I would go every day, even though I wasn't on the schedule. And I just learned, I was just learning things more. And the more I was there, I became friendly with the engineers and the assistant engineers. And, you know, they'd see me there and they needed something done. They'd be like, you know, I'm, we're aligning a tape machine, come watch, you know, just be, but it was because I was there and, you know, just, and, um, you know, throughout my career, a lot of the opportunities that I got was because I, I was present. I was there. Um, my first mix that I ever got on a, on a major label or an a, a artist was on the Gravediggers album. And the reason I got that gig was uh, I was the assistant engineer because I would I would never say no to any sessions. I was the yeah. assistant engineer they forgot somehow to book an engineer. And I remember just being there in the room and the RZA was like, you know how to run this stuff. I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, cool. You're the engineer. And awesome. literally we worked, the session started on, I'll never forget. It started on a Friday at 6 PM. I left there the session Monday morning. We recorded, we recorded, yeah. A, we probably recorded like five or six records and we mixed two or three. And I think two of them ended up on the album, but it was just literally, you know, I just stayed there. They wanted to keep recording and it was, it was crazy. Cause they would, you know, some of them would fall asleep and then someone else would wake up. And so I really got no break. And I literally stayed up from that Friday at 6 PM to Monday morning, just doing whatever it took to get it done because it was an opportunity that I would not have usually, you know, gotten. And, and, uh, and, you know, just, just being present, you know, just got me and, and just soaking in and, and listening, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and being willing to, to learn, you know, I think it's just some of the things that really helped me, you know, get ahead. Yeah. It sounds like you just completely immersed yourself in it. Yeah. There was nothing at that point. There was no, nothing, there was nothing else for me. No. Nope. Nothing else. Yeah. That was it, you know, you know, and, I, and it's going through it, you know, it was really, and in general, I'm a, a very a goal oriented person. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily think about, obviously there's steps and you have to think about each step that you're going to take, but my eyes is always on what are we trying to accomplish and whether we have to break down a wall or, you know, whatever it may be to get there. Yeah, that's just a part of it. It's not really I'm not really thinking about, you know, oh, we have to not you know, no, that that wall has to go because we have to get to the other side. That's it. Right. The end, right. You know, and, you know, and that's kind of just how I, you know, I, I approach things, you know, like, you know, it's I, I feel like there's a solution to pretty much everything and anything. It's, it's whether or not you're willing to put in the work to to get to that, to get to that, you know, totally. That's awesome. You're a very positive person. 
Listen, I try, I try, I try to be, you know, I, I, I'm a, uh, I always try to find a silver lining in yeah. things. And I think that, in, and I've learned just from life experience, you know, I, I think that there's something to learn from every, everything that happens, whether it's, you know, something that a situation that made you happy, a situation that was tragic or sad, you know, I always try to find a lesson or just something, you know, in it. You know, you know, because I mean, everything happens. I just believe, really believe that everything happens for a reason, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. That's really cool. Well, you know, a lot of what Viva does is, is with credits and all of that sort of thing. Is there anything that you've worked on that for whatever reason you didn't get credit for? Uh, there are a couple, I mean, you know, there are some that probably used to bother me, but they don't necessarily bother me at this point. Yeah. Um, but no, they're definitely projects that I've worked on that I didn't get credit on. Um, and, uh, but you know, credits, uh, are everything for an engineer, for a producer, for people, anyone who works on these records, like it's, it's really, it's, it's your resume and you know, it's funny that you bring up credits because one of the strategies that I used early on in my career was all about credits mm -hmm. uh, around. There was a time where I started working a lot with um, the track masters and, you know, I was working at that time. I was working a lot with the track masters. I was working with Q-Tip. I was working with a lot of the records on Raucous and uh, one of the things that I did because, you know, like I said, because of credits and I'm, and I'm at a point where I'm trying to just have a great resume to get to the next level. Cause at that point I wasn't really mixing that much. I was doing a lot of recording and I was trying to figure out how to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, um, what we did was, you know, you'd work on a project and you can work on a project for two months, three months, four months. And you put, you put all this work into it and it's released. And if it's not successful, no one sees the credits, right? right. You know, and, you know, just also just observing in many situations, just a, a song could be, it could be a hit record, but it doesn't necessarily sound good. But because it's a hit record, everyone's like, oh, I want to work with that guy. Right, right. You know, so, you know, so uh, just kind of like putting all those things together, I had decided that I wouldn't work on any project for more than, you know, two weeks max. And by doing that, um, because, you know, like, you know, because back then we used to literally fax our discographies. They'd be like, oh, yeah, you want to work? Oh, fax me your, dis you know, fax me your discography. And I didn't want to have like, you know, a resume with like, or discography with one artist's name and just a bunch of songs listed. Because if that artist didn't work out, you kind of didn't work out either, you know? <laughs> so my thing was, you know, I want to have a, a bunch of different names on my, on my discography. So, you know, it'd be whatever, Will Smith, Nas, this one, this, you know, so that, or, you know, if it was just sessions with producers, sometimes it wouldn't be an artist, just, so it'd be track masters, this one, that one, you know, so that when people are reading it, they're not just like, oh yeah, he does a bunch of stuff with Will Smith. And then that's, because even though Will, we did great with Will, but yeah. like, it's it's just one name, like, okay. But when people are like, oh, boom, this one, that one, that one, that one, you know? So it was almost like a, it was like a marketing tool, you know, uh, at that time for me. Um, so that kind of sounds like, didn't you mix on to the next one? No, I didn't mix on to on did the next one. It. No. Uh, something on that record, right? Uh, which album is that? The uh, Blueprint three. Yes. Blueprint three. I did, um, on Blueprint, I actually on Blueprint three, I did one song Empire State of Mind. Oh, oh, just, just the one with Lee. <laughs> one of my favorite songs about New York ever. Just that one. Yeah. That's amazing. I literally, every time I fly into New York, I always play that song. <laughs> I do. I love hearing that song and looking at the sky, like the skyline. It's you know, that record, you know, when, when I was first working on, on that song, 
I mean, I, I love this song instantly, but had no idea that it would be as huge as it as it was. Um, and mostly because it just felt just because of the subject matter. Although, you no, know, I still I do think New York is the greatest city in the world and probably one of the, the most famous city in the yeah. world. I just didn't think I, that it would, you know, transcend the way it did, you know. Well, I mean, it, it sounds great. So I just, thank you. You probably have something to do with that. I helped, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's I mean, it was great production, you know, well written yeah. song. You know, it's you know, it's it's all the elements, you know, I think that make it and and you know, because you can't, you know, I always say you can't polish a turd. Right, right. You know, absolutely. so so you know, you can make it a little better, but it's you know, if it's not good, it's not good. Yeah, that is awesome. I love that you mixed that song. <laughs> you have so many credits, it's hard to know all the ins and outs. Hey, listen, I've had I've I've been I've I've had the opportunity to be a part of many special moments, you know, and um uh What are know. some of your favorites? Wow, some of my favorites There are many and some of them may not necessarily be like you know the biggest records but there are things that, that i think there were uh projects that were either you know turning points for me in my career or things where i discovered uh different techniques and mixing you know mm -hmm. uh i guess some of my favorites would be you know uh i worked on an album and probably the, i think they would definitely like the first one to give me uh, a true shot at being a mixer uh, was uh, it was I worked with Artifacts, okay. and uh, they they were signed to Atlantic Records, mm -hmm. uh, and you know they actually just gave me an opportunity to go in and actually mix records. So that was like a big you know I learned a lot, you know working with them and just having the opportunity uh, working you know with Black Star, um, with Talib and and most. Um, that's a project that was really um, important to me. Uh, uh, the first Erica Badu album. Yeah. Um, you know, that was real. I mean, that was, that was an amazing experience because, you know, when I first started mixing, you know, I did everything possible to emulate Bob Power. You know, he was my mix idol. And on that project, you know, that album is mixed by myself, Bob Power, and Tim Latham, mm -hmm. you know, another one of my idols, you know, from that, from that era. And to be, you know, 20, well, how old was I? I was 21, going on 22, to, wow. you know, to be mixing alongside those guys was, you know. That's incredible. It was, you know, a big, big deal. And, uh, how I even got that gig was I was working with the Roots at Battery Studio and, you know, some guys who, another, you know, set of guys that really gave me my start really early uh, and gave me an opportunity. Uh, I was working with them and, and I was in the, and at that time I was working in, I think I was working in the A room mm -hmm. and Erica was working in the production room, the C room, she was recording her album. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were all friendly, you know, and sometimes I'd be mixing and she'd come, she'd come in and sit down and listen, you know, be in and out. And one day, and she used to come pretty early before, like a lot of, mostly everyone else. So I'd be in the room early mixing, just getting things together. And, and one day she said, literally it was just me and her. And she said, you know, I like you, you know, you're, you're going to mix on my album. You're like, what? Well, yeah, and the thing, but the thing was, I was like, okay, cool, yeah, like you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. down, and, and, and that was her, you know, that was her debut album, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. So, you know, that was, that was yeah, that was pretty, like, you know, just being again, you know, being, being present, and just, you know, um, I think being friendly and just kind and just being cool with people. I think you know, yeah, um, really. things, all those things, you know, play into into success and things that come to you. 
Well, nobody wants the vibe ruined in the studio, that's for sure. At all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely learned that when I was starting to engineer. And I obviously started working with this company and it took a completely not as cool route. Mm -hmm. But I well, listen, learned that. Well, well, I think that, you know, uh, I, it's interesting you say that because I got into the studio as an engineer because I wanted to be a better producer. Mm -hmm. I was because, you know, as a kid, I was doing production. I was trying to be a producer and uh, I wanted to figure out how these producers that I looked up to were doing things. And I, I thought, you know, I, I can't ask them. They're not going to tell me their like their tricks and their things. And I and I found out that the engineer was in the room with them. I, was, I thought that I looked that as an opportunity to be a fly on the wall and see all the things, you know, that they were doing. And once I started interning and started engineering, I kind of really fell in love with that process, you know? So sometimes, you know, I, I, I say that, you know, you think you want to do one thing or you start off on one way and then you kind of, you know, it, it's, it's, especially yeah. when you're young, you know, you don't necessarily know what you want to do <laughs> yeah, definitely. for the rest of your life, at, you know, or things may not necessarily be what you think they are, you know, so. Or you may not necessarily be good at one thing, but you're great at another and you don't even know, you know, you don't even know it yet. Yeah, totally. So, and that's good to be open to, to change. I know that's why I went this route is it seemed very technical and I didn't know anything about it and I didn't know anyone who knew anything about it. It's like it was so niche at that time. So yeah. And you, and you own that space, like period, <laughs> the end. Right. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jura. We like to think so. It's like, is that a good or a bad thing? I guess no one else is crazy enough to do it. <laughs> it's really detailed, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but if you had advice for up and coming people that are working in this space, you know, trying to figure out their way and how to navigate it, I think that's the biggest question people ask me is just how do you do it? Like, how do you even get into it? Well, you know, I think you know, speaking, uh, speaking in terms of now and, you know, when I was coming up, it was so much long ago and things have changed. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that there are, uh, basic fundamentals that work that continue to work. It's just, you know, how we apply those fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like you said before, you know, being open, mm -hmm. I think listening, uh, you know, doing more listening and less talking, you know, um, being, pre you know, being present, being, you know, being in it, mm -hmm. uh, being around people who are doing what you want to do at the level you want to, you know, do it at, uh, you know, having follow through, paying attention to detail and, uh, you know, I guess you have to, I guess you have to, you have to try things and you have to try things because again, you know, there's nothing wrong with failure, you know, it's, I as long as you learn a lesson from it. And, um, you know, I, you know, I think being persistent, you know, um, and respectful because sometimes people can be persistent and a little bit, you know, overbearing and not so respectful. Um, and, and, and patient, I think that's a thing that the current generation, you know, uh, don't have as much, of and you know a lot of that is due to technology you know um you know they kind of grow up in like a macro type of uh world where you know they hit a button they press a button and they get a result right and they don't really necessarily have any clue of the 300 things that happened from the time they hit the button and they got the result you right. know so like you know and i think uh it in developing a skill, like you can't, you can't skip the steps, you know? Uh, so I think, you know, no, not skipping steps and, and, and being patient and, you know, and listen, as a, I think when I was coming up, there are probably things that I did that seemed like I wasn't being patient, but I mean, now it's just so even, you know, so much, you know, faster, 
you know? Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's, I, I, I think patience and persistence and, you know, just, you know, not skipping steps and really understanding the fundamentals of things and really know what it is that you're doing and, and just learn everything. And then outside of that, you know, it's application mm -hmm. because, you know, there are so many smart kids and they know tons of things and, you know, but can you apply, you know, can, can you apply them? Um, so, you know, it, it's, this, I mean, I can go on and on, but yeah, you know, I, you know, it's, 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 it's I think, uh, you know, those, those are the main ones. I think you can start, I think if you start there. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that made me think of the next thing I was going to talk to you about because being so involved in the studio and then working on major label projects, how did you make that jump to Republic? Like what made you want to get involved in that aspect of it, of A and R, and actually working. Well, you know, mixing records for so long. Uh, as a mixer, uh, just through my ev evolution of myself, you know, uh, I would I'd mix records, but I also, you know, had a label, and was doing artist development and and having joint ventures and being a part of coming up with marketing plans and, you know, working some records at, at radio and just being, having my hands in so many different aspects and just, you know, running a smaller company mm -hmm. as well. You know, I just picked up to so many different skill sets, you know, throughout, mm -hmm. throughout the years. And I was getting to a point where, you know, I want to do more, I felt I had more to offer than sit in the studio for eight hours by myself mixing a record. And right. a lot of the records that I was actually getting, I thought they were good, but I felt like they could be great. Mm -hmm. And just with a little bit of, you know, push, I felt like some of the artists I, I was working with, they weren't really pushing their pen. They weren't really, you know, just, and I think a lot of that is just because, you know, they kind of are all working in their bedrooms. They don't have, you know, so I kind of, I, I looked at, going into a major label as an opportunity to, you know, share all the years of experience mm -hmm. that I've had making records with some of the greatest artists of all time. Yeah. To, you know, to be able to share that with young artists, young producers, uh, you know, the next generation of great executives, you know, just across the board, it was an opportunity for me to, you know, share, uh, all the things I've learned. And, you know, for me, you know, especially when it comes to rap, you know, I, I love many genres, but I prim I've primarily worked with rap and R&B, just hip hop culture in general. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a kid, it was a fad. This is what they said. This is going to be done in three years. You know, this is going to be. And, you know, here we are, you know, 40 years in, 50 years in, you know, uh, and it's a thing that has uh, made many, you know, many people successful. I've had great success working in the genre. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's done a lot for me. It's done a lot for my family and others around me. And I want to see that continue, you know, because I, I truly, I, I got it just because I love the music. You know, I was just fortunate enough to be successful and to make money at doing something that, you know, I love. So, you know, I want to, I want to see this continue and keep going. So like, you know, and, and, you know, and, and also a lot of people my age, like, you know, it's funny. I was telling someone the other day on Facebook, I, I see people always commenting like, cause you know, Facebook is generally a, a older demographic right. and like, oh, this sucks. That's terrible. This is that, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, when I see like people who don't work in music say it, I'm like, okay, I get it. But then when I see people who, are musicians who have been in music and that's all they're saying. And, yeah. and, I, and I feel like, you know, what, what are you doing to change it? If you, if you're, if you don't like it, you're capable. Right. Instead of saying that kid sucks, or, you know, why don't you hit them up and help them or, you know, just, you know, yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, I mean, that's what one was one of the things that, you know, really drove me to want to work in 
a label. And, and, it's, and then also for myself, you know, I did, I was in the studio side and I'm still in the studio, but just not, you know, a hundred hours a week, right. you know, I did that for 25 years and it's like, okay, I, I always want to be involved in music. So, you know, what am I going to do for my next 25 years? Right. You know, so, uh, you know, that, that's really how I got to our Republic. That's really cool. I remember when I saw, when I saw your name come through, I was like, yes, <laughs> I love it. I was super excited. Well, thank you, Duro. Oh, my I pleasure. You. Yes. Can't Miss wait to see you guys in, in the office. Totally. All right. All right. Have a good right, one. Talk soon. You too. Have a good weekend. Right, you Bye. too. Bye.